Happy Friday, everybody. My name is Sarah, and this is Pearls of Wisdom with Clean Intermittent Fasting and OMAD. I practice what I preach, and it continues to work for me. And many of you know I've gone the distance from Weight Watchers to keto to carnivore to here I am now. And so, anyway, it's nice to see that some people are coming back that haven't seen me in a while, and they weren't sure if I still existed or not and they must have just fallen upon something in the feed you know how you have it on the side of your computer but yep I'm still here and I've got my pandemic haircut that has now become my haircut which was really my hairstyle way back when I was in high school in the 60s so here I am a 72 year old broad with my long hair just doing it one day at a time I absolutely love clean, intermittent fasting with my OMAD. I just, I get so excited about it every day that it's there for me. And I get so excited about now loving black, strong coffee. And I buy organic beans and I grind them in my own little coffee bean grinder. I have two that are the same. One is for decaf, not used a lot, but when it is, you know, I need it to be there. And then the other one for the strong beans. Right now I'm working on a Vermont coffee bean, extra dark. And um, it's been fun and I love to change it up, but it's usually organic beans, except for when I buy the Starbucks French roast. That's not organic, but I do like that too. So I'll, you know, have a bean, a bag of beans, a bag of beans. And then when that's over, I'll add a new bag, a new, you know, brand and just enjoy that. And the changes, the nuances are are a little bit different, but it's not a flavored coffee. It's a strong, dark coffee. And um, that's the way we do it when we clean intermittent fast with just black coffee and plain water. My favorite um, water of choice would be San Pellegrino. And I buy the little eight pack cans, unflavored, The flavors look nice, but I don't buy them. I just have unflavored. I love the bubbles. I love cracking that can at like 9 or 10 in the morning when I'm shopping for customers, and that's my treat. And, or plan B is a smart, smart water, as we say here. Um, And I have that, but I do like the bubbles the best. So we continue to do what works, and um, many of you know that... um, I no longer do keto. I do more of a whole foods program and um, my my taste for sugar, my taste for sweet is being satisfied these days when I have some fruits um, chopped up with some either good cultured cottage cheese or some faye full fat um, yogurt. And then sometimes I have um, Michelle's granola that I get at Whole Foods and sometimes it's just plain and then I have like a tablespoon of organic raisins to put on top of that and that is pretty much my daily dessert. I still love my navel oranges too and I kind of am the end the fast the OMAD feast excuse me no, not the fast the OMAD feast with the orange and I was missing fruits. I went, I left keto because I was missing, you know, veggies. And then I began to miss fruits and I began to add them in with the berries. And I I just refused to pay the amount of money they're asking for GMO berries. You know, (laughs) let me just say it like that. I mean, the organic ones are nice, but the, the cost is prohibitive. So I do better when I buy, you know, a couple of apples, a couple of pears, Um, I do have some organic strawberries I'm working on right now, but it's basically a treat. And Greg likes the organic ones. I buy the organic red and green grapes. You say that fast. Go ahead. Say it fast. Yeah, see, told you it's not easy Um, at Whole Foods. And that's my base for my um, fruit cup. They're on sale every week for like $2.52 a pound. Thank you. Whole Foods is sometimes cheaper than the regular stores. I'm sure you found that out if you trust yourselves to go into Whole Foods. It's not as expensive as it used to be for sure. Thank you, Amazon. So 
Anyway, I stay away from the bad oils. What are the bad oils? The bad oils are vegetable oil, canola oil, corn oil. Um, some say sesame seed oil. Some say it's another one in that little, when you see the little bottles that you can get. Anyway, the ones that I have, extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil. And then I um, have a jug of Carrington's organic uh, ghee next to my stove, along with organic coconut oil. And those are what I cook with most of the time. They work. The ghee is, I think, something like $52 now for the jug. I think it was $42. Now, now I think it's, you know, spiked like everything else. But those are the oils that I have. Um, I have spray ghee. I have spray avocado oil. I have spray extra virgin olive oil. Um, so I stay away from the bad seed oils. Um, canola being the worst because they can dress it up and, and it's like putting lipstick on a pig, right? When you dress up canola oil and you can buy organic canola oil, it's still a seed oil. So canola oil is in so many foods. It's probably in the Michelle's um, granola that I have. I don't know. I didn't read the label. I just love the, I love the granola. <laughs> guilty pleasure. Um, but yes, you will find that canola oil is in things that are touted as safe or healthy or keto or any of those sort of things. And it's really a no-no seed oil. And seed oils can do more to your gut, I'm convinced, than having, you know, an apple or some peas, right? I think that uh, those are the things that we really need to avoid are the processed foods with the bad seed oils. And you can, you can put at the top of Google or YouTube seed oils and you can get all the information that, you know, I've listened to over the years about the oils and how they're not good. And beware of butter too. And I did see a neat butter gram about the fat content and um, the store brand type of butters and then the mixed blends, stay away from the mixed blends. Um, I have bought the rolled it many, many times, but right now I'm working on Kerrygold and Finlandia. Um, they're from grass-fed cows. I think they're 42% butterfat, and they seem to be a mite bit cheaper at BJ's. So when you buy the three packs of them or the multiple sticks of the Kerrygold they offer, it's good. I, I do love my eggs. I'm a jumbo egg kind of gal. I get my jumbo egg cartons of Pete and Jerry's at, um, once again, Whole Foods, and they're the cheapest thing going, um, once again. And when, when Whole Foods has a sale, it's really a pretty good sale. So that's where I've been known to buy my oils, my eggs, my um, yogurt, my um, good culture cottage cheese, and they, the vegetables are always primo, um, not always this, that way in the other stores. You always have to flip things over. I mean, I've learned that as a shopper. Um, somebody the other day wanted organic mint, oh, organic, sold at Shaw's and Albertsons, and they were all like black, funky, drippy, bad. I mean, and what are they getting? Four forty nine for no? I'm not paying that for this customer, you know. So you have to, you have to be careful, especially now with your shopping money where you're going. And um, I, you know, I did just get an email from a woman that was eating a lot of um, low budget things because of her money issues, and she realized how inflammatory those items were. I'm a believer of things in, you know, a, a sane way of having them. I'm a card-carrying, carb addict, food addict, sugar addict. So I'm very well aware of overeating and um, having a lot of the wrong things. When I think about what I ate as a child, it's just crazy. So um, I'm careful about reading labels and, you know, some things slip in. They always will. But it's the way that it is. I mean, we don't, sometimes it just is what it is and we have to go with it. But for the most part, 
each day I'll have a little bit of protein I'll have which is not as much as it used to be I've got the cottage cheese going on the chopped up fruit so I know that that's part of it like today I'm having two jumbo eggs um, so I know I'm getting protein there I might have a slice of cheese with that um, I might have some turkey we bought a rotisserie turkey breast so I, I know you know I just I've been practicing intuitive eating which is great when you have an OMAD and you're having your feast because if you if you eat slow and intentional and enjoy it then by the time you get to you know the next to the last course which for me is the orange um you know it's the food in my belly has caught up with my head and says you know you've had enough girly and sometimes in my head I'll do the um ballpark calorie count so I think in case you were wondering I think I landed about 1500 calories a day I consider myself on maintenance what I wear for a size what I weigh on the scale is less than I weighed in the third grade um, I was very heavy getting heavier all the time eating all the wrong things um, and so now you know I just I just feel really really blessed I guess I've changed I guess being keto and carnivore might have changed my metabolism, but I find that I can have more of that whole foods program diet and um, stay at the same weight, but my head is satiated. And I like a satiated head because I don't like to feel that I'm depriving myself of anything. So if I can leave you with anything with this video today on Friday, um, it's you know, trust your gut and read the backs of the labels. Look out for those seed oils. If, if nothing else, look out for those seed oils and enjoy your journey and share it below. I love hearing how you're doing, what you're doing, and are you too matting, oh matting, no matting? <laughs> Let me know. This has been Sarah with Pearls of Wisdom with Clean Intermittent Fasting which means there's nothing but black coffee and plain water, nothing flavored, no sweeteners, all day long in my fasting period, and then I have my feast. That's how I do it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you here the next time. Bye-bye for now.